co-main event. Clay Guida, with a record of 37 and 18, and a big Lebowski tattoo, which I always respect him for. Oh, has he got that? He's got, uh, on, on, on his back, he's got a picture of, oh, uh, I think it's a picture of the dude bowling. Yeah, he's a big, big Lebowski fan. Big, big Lebowski fan. And then we've got Claudio Puez at 12 and 2, uh, with a 3-inch height advantage and 2-inch reach advantage. Now, I enjoy watching Puez fight, and, and I think that his consistency of attacking knee bars is a really interesting um, scrambling tactic against someone like Clay Guida. I, I do feel like Guida's got a pace that will wear him down, though, because like if you think back to um, if you think back to when um, when Puez fought uh, Felipe Silva, yeah, and he got he got a, a beaten in that fight, and then was able to snag that uh, that knee bar, and then I mean it, with the grit smacker fight, he wasn't losing that one quite as badly, I didn't think, but still goes to the knee bar in the third. I just I don't know I just feel like the pace of Clay Guida is something to to like a weapon in itself, and I, and I think if Guida is smart enough to be able to get himself through the first round, and not like scramble out of all those fucking knee bars and stuff, I don't know I don't know. I, I think I'm clinging to the Clay Guida that I knew from ten years ago. Yeah, I see. I, I, the only thing I think with uh, Poyes is that since that Felipe, because when was that twenty eighteen? I think he's grown a lot as a fighter uh, since then. Because then it noticed that, especially in the Groot Smacker uh, fight, like his striking seemed a bit more. And his style is very. It reminds me a lot of like Charles Oliveira, Oliveira a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I feel like if he if, like he can develop his style like Charles did, like start to work a lot more on his striking and develop himself, and not really rely so much on his on his uh, ground game. Mm. Um, I think he could go like a long way. Um, it's just a, it's a really odd thing to have to fall back on is a knee bar. Mm -hmm. It's just a it's a really odd it's a really odd technique and like someone like Clay Guida with his wrestling ability, I I, I would feel like he should be able to stay away from that because it's not like players is like is it's not like he's putting it on people, not not in not in that way anyway. I mean like yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think Clay Guida of old, like if you take the best version of, of Clay Guida, he wears this guy down and he beats him up over three rounds and he wins a decision. And at the end of it, you go, oh, of course Clay Guida is going to do that to him because he's only had 14 fights and that's what Guida does. And he'll be sprinting around the cage as soon as the fight's over because he's still got too much energy. But at this point, I, I can kind of see Guida getting getting sneered with something like an Epar. Mm. I could see him getting subbed. I can see it just purely because like um yeah like Poyez is much more of an athlete now than, than Clay Guido is yeah and I feel like it, it could just sway it just purely because of that it's kind of like boy versus man <laughs> yeah sort of thing um he's got 10, old 10 submission losses on his record Clay Guido has and Wikipedia's got him listed as 37 and 21 I wonder if they're counting like exhibition oh, matches or something. These are off UFC stats, so yeah. the who the fuck knows what's 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 going. On. Yeah, I remember being being there live at his fight against Diego Sanchez, June twentieth, two thousand nine. <laughs> that was the fight of the year in two thousand nine. It was wild. If you've not watched that fight, it's worth a revisit. Like uh, Guida gets caught with a head kick. I think he's maybe in the second round. Gets caught with a head kick, and it it's like he's got like like a fucking springboard in his back pocket. Like he bounces back to his feet. It's like Tyson Fury sitting up after he got dropped by Wilder. I don't know how he bounced back to his feet so quickly. This, this, he's been in some fantastic fights. He really has. And, and I just never feel like I can count Clay Guida out. But I feel like, I mean, you know, subbing Leonardo Santos. Like I could see him doing something. Like you look, okay. So like you, you look at that last fight against Leonardo Santos where I think Santos threw 46 punches in the first round without Guida throwing anything back. Guida was almost out of there. Some referees would have probably stepped in and, and, and saved him from taking any more. But <laughs> he got his mouth guard, I think, either punched or kneed out. And there was a brief break in the action. And he just went for his little jog around the edge of the cage, went back to where his mouth guard was. And the referee had it right in his hand, passed it to him, put the mouth guard in, shook his head, clapped, and then went back at Santos. And you just <laughs> see Santos go, fuck. 
that was everything I had. Like I had just spent all my energy trying to finish him with those 46 punches he threw. And then Guida just starts, starts coming on strong. Yeah. Like Poyers has got to pace himself. He's got to fight like a mature fighter. And I don't know, I don't know as I've seen that ability in him. Yeah. I thought he looked good against Grutzmacher, but I still felt like he was like, he kind of runs aground with his conditioning and then he's able to snag a knee bar because, Oh, fucking hell. Cause that's what I'm good at. Like he might, I'll predict it. Fuck it. I think Clay Guida is going to beat the, beat him senseless for two and a bit rounds. And then players is going to sub him in the third. Yeah. 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 I had, I had, I did pick Poyers and it was purely just down to youth and being younger. Yeah. Being, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not being 40. Yeah. You could say it, Jamie. I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm but, not upset. <laughs> I'm still 39 for another, what, 28 days. <laughs> The, but, but the only thing is as well about Poyez is that when he goes in shoots for takedowns it it, it kind of crawls towards yeah him. yeah yeah I, I, there's a couple of things in his game I think he can like massively improve on and whether Clay like um, takes advantage of that I don't know but mm. yeah I just think Poyez yeah young so so Poyers. there you go. You, you, you've <laughs> highlighted something that could quite easily lead to the end of the fight, right? So Poyer shoots to his knees and then kind of crawls to drive through. So if he does that to Clay Guida, Guida being a wrestler, he might sprawl out and be on top of someone and be like, oh, this is where I circle around and take the back. So he immediately circles around. So now he's behind Poyer's and Poyer's forward rolls and he's into his knee bar. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That might be why he's not too concerned about finishing those takedowns because most of the time people will circle to his back and then he's then he's on on a knee bar. I I just I, I hate to say it, I, I just see Guida getting subbed. I see him getting caught in the third round. But what do I know? <laughs> right. So we're both going uh, players then, are we? Yeah, I'm going to go players. Okay, yeah. Fair enough. 